entertain none of this nonsense and nothing over the phone. I, I'm going to need you to get rid of all the leftover pizza boxes. You know what? All the boxes left over from the pizza. All the boxes. Okay. Make sure you recycle the plastic like we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Jay reach out yet? Nah, Bob. He ghosting. I just wanted to be a good example, and uh, it was hard for me being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. I just want to protect her, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want her to go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. Boys, do you have any idea what that looks like? Well. I'm gonna show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant and baby oil. I guess is you know serious about his sports. Um, Puffy is said to be a helicopter dad. You know, shows up and you know, you know, you know what hel helicopter parenting is. <laughs> Anyway, a helicopter dad. So apparently um, the team had practice early in the morning and Justin had missed quite a few practices and then he wasn't performing uh, suitable to whoever's watching over the team. I guess they would call that the coach. Where is LeBron on the Diddy thing? Because if you're telling me that you use your, your platform to speak out when there are black victims, there sure as hell seems to be a lot of them when it comes to Diddy. Well, it looks like he's having a really good time. It looks, it looks like he's had a lot of time with Diddy. They've been friends for years. They're always hugging, dapping up, bad boys for life, right? And so where is LeBron James, who has elected himself the mayor of speaking out when nobody cares to hear his opinion, speaking out to emote to black Americans, to make black Americans emotional in order to make them feel justified in their behavior when they riot and they loot, because that's what he's doing. He's in his mansion, he's tweeting, you see, we can't even step outside in Beverly Hill. We can't even, and then the black youth are seeing this, they're going, that's my king, and they take to the streets and they get themselves in trouble. My involvement in those parties was primarily for entertainment purposes. I had no idea about any of that terrible stuff going on. It's crucial to separate my presence at a party from any illegal activities that might have been occurring. You know I stand against exploitation and violence. So let's make that clear, okay? Is facing some pretty eyebrow raising accusations lately. I'm talking about everything from claims of sabotaging other black female artists to allegations of her dabbling in witchcraft. And guess what? These accusations aren't just popping up out of nowhere. They're coming from people who were once in Beyonce's circle. Has LeBron James offered to cut a check? Has LeBron James simply made a statement that this is wrong? Has LeBron James maybe just said, hey, I was at those parties, but I didn't realize that this was taking place? Or, hear me out, is it plausible that the reason that LeBron James is opting to be so quiet is because when he read that lawsuit and realized that Diddy had cameras everywhere? What you watching, little bro? 
caught you in 20K HDR 1200 FPS Super Nintendo iOS 49 Blu-ray Ultraviolet Radiation 1080p PlayStation 5. Unbeknownst to his partygoers at these freak-offs, is it plausible that he's got LeBron James doing something that he wouldn't want made public? Is it plausible that Yeg was right and the feds were using him to keep people in control by filming them when they're high, when they're drunk, when they're doing something that they wouldn't want people to know that they were doing behind closed doors. Maybe it's just cheating on a spouse, who knows? Is it plausible that he's collected something about LeBron James that he is fearful maybe made public? I don't know, I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking for the king to use his platform to speak to us peasants. And that's all I'm saying about that. Oh. Is that gonna be a new thing? Are you gonna try to be early? Yes, I'm trying to be early. Are you gonna be early for my party? Yes, I am. No. No. It, you know I have to arrive fashionably late. All right, not too late though. Not too late? Not too late, what please. What time would you like me there? Um, I'll tell you later, okay. but oh, not okay. too late. Cause, Cause you know, once you get there, the party really starts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I promise you, I'm not gonna let you down on this big one. All right, for good. Real. Good. Your shoes, your feet are gonna have blisters. Um, You're gonna be dancing so hard. I, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> what time would your party start? Let's say. Like 9:30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party, though. Uh huh. <laughs> um, it, no, it, it'll go from like 9:30 to like maybe three o'clock. Two, three o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. we'll... And then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. then it... mm -hmm. No, I mean, um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, <laughs> I'll listen to the music. Um, <laughs> I've heard that song, After Party. Um... <laughs> Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? Alan, He's been on your show many you times. 784 male shaped toys. Do you have any idea what that looks like? Well, I'm going to show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant and baby oil. No. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah, man. You doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Cassie, I will advocate for you. Because, see, I know something that a lot of people don't know. I know that you and Kim Porter had a sit down right before she left us. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. And yet nobody said, <gasps> but did he get arrested finally and, and, and get the book ready to be thrown at his very, very, very dancing feet? They're going to be his feet with that law book. You know why Puff's party are so cool, man? Because you can't get into the f party. It doesn't matter what the fuck's going on in the party. Nothing cool is going on in the party. It's a party. But you can't, for some fucking reason, at his party, you can't get into his party. So now what do you want to do? Get into that man's party and see what the fuck all the hubbub's about. So right now I have a do not fucking enter sign on Machine Gun Kelly, man. Breaking news. No one has expected Megan Fox to be included in Diddy's list of celebrities that is shared with the public. Well, if you don't know this, Megan Fox has shocked everyone by wiping her Instagram and X accounts clean, fueling rumors that it's all linked to the recent arrest of Sean Diddy Combs. As you know, Diddy is facing explosive charges of sex trafficking and racketeering, with allegations dating all the way back to 2008. Now, here's where it gets that's interesting. Megan Fox isn't the first celebrity to pull this move. Usher and PNK have done the same, deleting their posts just as the news of Diddy's arrest hit. But what's the connection? Well, Megan has been seen in close circles with Diddy at various events, sparking questions about whether she's distancing herself to avoid being dragged into the scandal. Evie Roan now is wondering whether these celebrities are protecting themselves by attempting to vanish out of this storm, because all them celebrities who had fun hanging out 
out with Diddy are now feeling the pressure of being dragged in this mess anytime. The lawyer said, he probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Costco hit right back. We don't even sell, baby. All right. We be having a real conversation about some real shit. It ain't that much ass shit in the world. Everybody know that. P. Diddy the lawyer said he probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Costco hit right back. We don't even sell, baby. Oh. education in South Africa and I'm going to go village to village personally myself and with a team of people and pull young girls out of villages and huts who would never ever dreamed or had an opportunity for an education because you're a second-class citizen if you're a girl in Africa and other countries and give them an opportunity to come to my school and become the leaders of Africa and I'm doing that one brick at a time I'm building the girls Academy and I'm building a school. Was this all your idea? Is it the model? Or are you reproducing something that has worked somewhere no, else I'm in the starting, world? It's, I'm, it's I'm, all yeah. your idea. It's my idea because I believe that education is freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe that education saved my life. And I think that's how I'm going to save. That's my contribution. And, you know, obviously, you know, I have a foundation and we do lots of things. What I try to do is to use whatever I have to educate people. I can't believe you're this serious. I don't know what to say. Well, it's tremendous. Yeah. It's, it's tremendous. Yeah. And, uh, God bless you for doing Thank that. Thank you for being so nice to me. You will definitely be upset. You will definitely be upset. You will be outstanding, motherfucker. I was there. You the man, Nigga, stop working out, though. Just start, like, getting in the gym, though, nigga. You know, so I ain't gotta work out, nigga. You know, so my thumbs are so strong with Kevin and all that paper. But y'all, hold on, tell you. Tell you, tell you, stop. You gotta do this for me. Do I work? Do I work? I'm like Kenny. You feel me? He like Clinton. I was the president for shit. Man, yeah, that's OG now. Come on. I was just Wait, was that his time? Did that happen? Well, I was on uh, Oprah's show, on the Oprah Winfrey show doing Change Your Life TV, and then people saw me, and other networks came after me. You see, I had already been an author that had sold over six million books, 14 different titles. <laughs> yes, and I went on the Oprah Winfrey show, and Miss Winfrey asked me back again, and again, and again, and eventually, I became part of her Change Your Life faculty. And it was all good. I had traveled all over the country. You know why Puff's parties are so cool, man? Because you can't get into the f party. It doesn't matter what the f**k's going on in the party. Nothing cool's going on in the party. It's a party. But you can't, for some f**king reason, at his party, you can't get into his party. So now what do you want to do? Get into that man's party and see what the f**k all the hubbub's about. So right now I have a do not fucking enter sign on Machine Gun Kelly, man. Internet. That's, that's what we're calling that it. That belongs to the <laughs> devil. No. Unless you calling that the devil. <laughs> she ain't nothing but employee. Oh, oh. A half of which dumb ass bitch. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's funny that it's, it's crazy you say these Why things. Why don't just... nobody want to accept that bitch bitch? I think she's... He so... went and killed the girl cats. Oh. <sighs> Okay. A girl went to court mm. and charged her with extreme witchcraft. Mm. She she was hypnotized. She was drugged. 
Beyonce came and she was in there eating on her and shit while she was asleep. <laughs> no snacking on his bitch. Killing people cats. Mm. And guess what? They wouldn't give her the restraining order. They just told her to stay away from Beyonce and work for somebody else. Guess what? She's having a hard time finding work too. Which is interesting because she's a brilliant musician. And she was trained at the Berkeley, esteemed Berkeley College of Music. Handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington, Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington, who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Hmm. Yeah. Jermaine Dupri, king of the <laughs> if you ask me, baby. You know, with another pal of yours that you've become friendly, P. Diddy, and uh, there you are with the... Uh, well, yeah. was, was P. Diddy, did he ask to be in the photo with you, or yeah. did you, was it the I, other way around? I mean, P. Diddy's a little up his own ass to be on the show. But that was... That was... <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, now, we were at a college football game, the UCLA. <laughs> but he is, you know what I mean? I didn't even want to get in the picture. He barely shook my hand. I was about to just give my left to the chin real quick. <laughs> But uh, this, this is L.A., isn't it? You just go around meeting people, so I'm just having fun. But P. Diddy was on the bottom of the list of people oh, I wanted to meet, especially only, after finally meeting him. Only you could say P. Diddy's up his own arse. I had smoked something that Puff had gave me, and it was like, it, it was as if I, I had partied like three nights straight. It was, like, <laughs> it was the craziest. I, I was just like, I'm about to go to the airport. You know, I need something that'll knock me out. I mean, it, it totally did the opposite. It was, I was, I, I did, cra I was doing crazy dance moves to the weirdest music for 20 minutes straight. Like out, like while he was on the phone, and I was just outside the window, looking in while he was looking at me. Like, man, I just wanted something to go to the airport. You know, just to, to last me so I can knock out on this flight. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have my guy. So he goes down, comes back up with his stuff, and the guy shows Puff, and I was like, no, 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 what? No, no, I'm, I'm trying to give him like the. He said the Snoop Doggy Dog is what he said he's trying to give me. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I want, yeah, yeah. What is that? What's up with yeah, that? Where's that? At? Sounds good. Whatever right. the hell that yeah, is. I'm like, what is that? So, <laughs> long story short, he he finally finds it, and he's like, oh, here you go. He's like, now, the, now my guy said take four, like four hits, and like stop. All right. You know, like, and we didn't. You know, I just kept going. So, yeah, and so like he was like he was like come back up in five minutes. And I mean, when I tell you I came back over five minutes and like had a had a result for him, like you know what I mean? Like it it was. And then he's on the phone running his empire. Yeah. And you're dancing naked outside, <laughs> outside of his, his window. window. <laughs> <laughs> Before his arrest, disgraced music mogul Sean Diddy Combs was famous for holding his annual 4th of July party in the Hamptons. All of the well-known partygoers wore white, and it wasn't exactly a family-friendly event. Now imagine you're a six-year-old kid and you find yourself a guest there. Allison Hall has more. Can you believe this six-year-old boy was once a guest at Diddy's infamous white party? The disgraced mogul has his arm draped around a young Justin Levtosky back in 1999. Justin is now 31 and tells Inside Edition about taking that photo. He put his arm around me in an uncomfortable way, close to... Um, areas that you shouldn't as a as a grown man. He recalls what he saw at the party. So I remember marijuana um, and topless women. That's the two main things that I remember. I ain't gonna say that. I heard about that though. But I ain't about to say that. But, what? Well, well, you and Diddy? You and Diddy? Yeah. yeah. You and Diddy? You and Diddy what? You and Diddy. No. They, they said he was... They said he was... He was How you knew that? How you, how you know now that? I'm about to Google because I ain't never That's heard this. He said he was Diddy's boy toy. Uh, yeah, what? I was in Jamaica with him. Oh, I see it now. See? <laughs> Why well, can't Osiris in Jamaica with his alleged boo Diddy? Can we talk about Diddy new boy toy? Why can't Osiris? Why you did this to Diddy, man? It's messed up, man. I'm just asking my roommate so he can clear it up. That's what the breakfast. Hey, that, I didn't even you know that. That, 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 that. Look, I try to share in life. I think that you learn that in kindergarten, and um, you know, unfortunately, people forget that what they learned in kindergarten a lot of times, and so sharing is a part of it. You know, let let other people utilize your crayons too. It's okay, and so that's kind of how I live my life. You know what I'm saying, like share when it's appropriate um set the example when it's appropriate when it's when it's in line with my vision these kind of things are a consequence of those kinds of actions as opposed to it being like something i set out to do or contract it wasn't planned you know like everybody wants to paint themselves as a genius but i don't i don't even know how i got here all i know is 
I follow my bliss, you know what I'm saying? I do what I love, and here we are, you know what I mean? One of the biggest music executives currently was just arrested. I'm curious if you have any opinion on his arrest or the alleged action. No, I feel for his children. The rest, I can't speak on. I mean, you know, that's what we got court system for, but I feel for his kids. But I felt very, very good because yeah. I knew the size of the lady game uh, Rock, yeah no did it Pete Paul's now I'm just saying I just knew it I just cause you know I know they just wait they wait they just wait, waiting on you we knew the lit I'm talking about in basketball terms don't y'all be going this so I'm gonna go ahead I'm just the one time I'm saying it for Ocho and I on nightcap no did it we knew the lady game cars were too big for the Iowa Hawkeyes that size, six foot seven Cardosa. Mm -hmm. You had a uh, walking. He's want you to, you know what these rappers, all these singers, all these big rappers y'all y'all look up to? They always tell you what the good part about, but you, they never tell you what the bad part. That's just, that, and that's crazy, man. Yeah, they got all this money, but get, they, 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 they're dealing with emo spirits. They're dealing with killing themselves. Kids have like an hour left. <laughs> so get extra comfortable, kids, because after that, Y'all gotta go, it's a wrap for y'all, cause this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't wanna come to, okay? So, you know, let's just start to get our groove on a little bit, then an hour we put the kids away, it's all good. All right, DJ, let's hit it, let's do it. Come on. Okay, now. One thing he said about Diddy was that Diddy wants to party, but you gotta tell him no. Oh yeah, well you do gotta tell him no. <laughs> You gotta tell him no. <laughs> you gotta tell him no. You gotta tell Diddy no. Everybody knows you gotta tell him no because you don't tell him no, he's gonna put you in a situation where you gonna have to say yes or no or again. So just say no. Just say no. <laughs> just say no. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Man, you deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. It's a no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I get it. You got it. You look time. beautiful. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. Where you put my bag? Daddy, I like when you when you scrambling and scraping for shit. I like that. I'll be practicing. I got yeah. to look, did you look miss back me? on where I became. Did and, you miss me though? Yeah. For real, because we. I'm saying I miss, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday party, man. Man, I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party. This week, Houston-based lawyer Tony yeah, Busby lawyer says Facebook. more than 120 people are coming forward with claims Diddy sexually abused them. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. Did Diddy assault you in any way? And is there anything that you may want to confess tonight before you go in? I keep everything right here. There you go. Or right here. <laughs> yeah. You angelic all the time. New footage has emerged showing Diddy and Ellen together at a party, and it's creating a lot of interest. People are keen to understand what their relationship is really like. How did this footage even come to be? And more importantly, what does it reveal about them? Was it just another celebrity gathering, or is there more to it than meets the eye? People are trying to put the pieces together, and the timing is pretty intriguing, or maybe a little unsettling, depending on your perspective. With Diddy already facing some pretty serious controversies, this viral footage has really shifted the focus. People are really interested in this, and seeing Diddy and Ellen together at lots of high-profile events has only made people think more and more. They seem to be laughing and completely at ease with one another. Now fans are left wondering, is there something more to this relationship than meets the eye? One of the most talked about moments was when they were spotted together at a major music awards show. They weren't just standing there, they were fully engaged, laughing, joking and enjoying the performances together. This encounter sparked a lot of speculation, with many wondering if their relationship is just platonic or if there's more to it. Ellen's playful attitude has definitely piqued people's interest in her relationship with Diddy. On her talk show, she calls him cute nicknames like Cuddle MC Snuggle Stuff, even using that term in a birthday shout-out on social media. In the current context, that nickname takes on a whole new significance. 
Was it just a bit of friendly banter between colleagues, or could it have a deeper significance? Fans are looking back at their past interactions, social media posts and public appearances to try and find out what really connects them. The fact that both Diddy and Ellen have stayed silent about these rumours just makes people think there might be something in them. Sometimes, what isn't said can be just as revealing as what is. The reappearance of this footage has only served to heighten curiosity, prompting many to ponder whether Ellen's connections to Diddy's world extend beyond the realm of friendship. As things stand, and Diddy faces some pretty serious legal challenges, the conversation about their relationship has become even more intense. Could Ellen know about the more controversial parts of Diddy's parties, or was she just enjoying the glamorous celebrity lifestyle without really understanding what was going on? Fans are really interested to see what Diddy or Ellen say about it. Until they choose to address the growing speculation, the rumors are likely to persist, fueling even more intrigue and discussion. To learn new details today following the arrest of Sean Diddy Combs in New York City as he's expected to begin a, a, be arraigned this morning, Eyewitness News reporter Irene Cruz here in studio with the latest. Irene. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, event. there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's the... <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it, no, it, it'll go from like 9.30 to like maybe 3 o'clock. Two, three o'clock, and then you know we have the top two floors of the hotel, mm -hmm. we'll... and then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. then it... mm -hmm. No, I mean um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, <laughs> I listen to the music. Um, <laughs> I've heard that song after party, um, <laughs> but that was at the Holiday Inn, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. I heard about that though, but I ain't about to say that. What? what, what? You and Diddy? You and Diddy? Yeah. yeah, you and Diddy. You and Diddy what? Diddy. No. They said he was. They said he was. How you knew that? How you, how you, how you know now that? I'm about to Google because I ain't never That's heard this. He said he was Diddy's boy toy. Uh, yeah, what? He's, I was in Jamaica with him. Oh, I see it now. See? <laughs> I was well, in Jamaica with him. in Jamaica with his alleged boo, Diddy. Can we talk about Diddy new boy toy? Why can't I start? Why you did this to Diddy, man? It's messed up, man. I'm just asking my rumors so he can clear it up. That's what the breakfast is. Yeah, I didn't even you know that. That ain't nothing that needs to be cleared up. This is what my lawyer said. He probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Costco hit right back. We don't even sell baby oil. We be having a real Prince William and Prince Harry to uh, to a Diddy party. I don't think not 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 anymore. I mean, before you know. <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. <laughs> After now they're off the list. But you know, before when they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves. So hey, I was like, 
Why don't you come hang out with me? New footage has emerged showing Diddy and Ellen DeGeneres together at a recent party, and it's quickly grabbed the public's attention. People are curious about what their relationship is really like, looking closely at every detail in the hope of finding out more. This video isn't just another peek into the lives of celebrities. It's got people wondering how Diddy and Ellen are really connected. How did this footage even make its way online? And perhaps more intriguingly, what story does it tell? Was this just a casual night out or is there more to it? The timing of this video's release is particularly noteworthy, and it may even be unsettling for some observers. Diddy is currently facing a number of significant controversies, and this unexpected footage with Ellen has shifted the focus onto him in a different way. Fans are really engaged, watching and re-watching clips of Diddy and Ellen having fun at various high-profile events. The way they're all relaxed, laughing and looking totally unfazed has only made people wonder more. Is there something about their relationship that we don't know yet? One particularly noteworthy moment was when Diddy and Ellen were seen together at a major music awards show. They weren't just passing the time, they were actively engaged, sharing jokes, laughing and clearly enjoying each other's company as they watched performances side by side. This particular interaction caused a bit of a stir and led to online speculation about the true nature of their bond. Many fans are wondering if their connection is just platonic or if there's more to it. We've got this client, um, you plan to file the suit this week. There hasn't been um, a lot of detail about it, but I think you can reveal a little more tonight about exactly what your client says Diddy did to her. Tell, tell us a little more if you can, even though the suit's not officially been filed. Yes, I'll have the suit filed uh, sometime this week, probably in the next couple of days. Um, it's just in editing right now, just to get the final touches on it, just to make sure we haven't missed any causes of action. I think as it stands right now, we're at 19 causes of actions from sexual assault, sexual battery, of course, RICO uh, charges and uh, sex trafficking. But essentially, my client was raped by Mr. Combs, his bodyguard, and a friend who invited my client to his home to set up this whole situation. It, the details are graphic in nature, and the complaint lays out all of the details in the graphic, just deplorable way my client was victimized in that day, or in that night, rather, and her harrowing escape and how she was able to finally get away and managed to get to safety after the gruesome attack. 100 victims. One. More than two dozen of those future plaintiffs. How does that even make sense? 100 victims? This is just one, one phase of the allegations and stuff. Like, on top of that, he had allegations prior. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Diddy Combs, on behalf of more than 100 victims, more than two dozen of those future plaintiffs say they were just kids. Look, I try to share in life. I think that you learn that in kindergarten. And, um, you know, unfortunately, people forget what they learned in kindergarten a lot of times. And so sharing is a part of it. You know, let, let other people utilize your crayons, too. It's OK. And so that's kind of how I live my life. You know what I'm saying? Like share when it's appropriate. Um, set the example when it's appropriate, when it's in, when it's in line with my vision. These kind of things are a consequence of those kinds of actions, as opposed to it being like something I set out to do or contract. It wasn't planned, you know. Like everybody wants to paint themselves as a genius, but I don't. I don't even know how I got here. All I know is I follow my bliss. You know what I'm saying? I do what I love, and here we are. You know what I mean? One of the biggest music executives was just arrested. I'm curious if you have any opinion on his arrest or the alleged action. No, I feel for his children. The rest I can't speak on. I mean, you know, that's what we got court system for, but I feel for his kids. But I felt very, very good because yeah. I knew the size of the lady game. Uh, yeah. No did it Pete Paul now. I'm just saying. I just knew it. I just cause you know I know they just wait, they wait, they wait, they wait, waiting on you. We knew the lit. I'm talking about in basketball terms. Don't y'all be going this. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just the one time I'm saying it for Ocho and I on nightcap. No, did it. We <laughs> knew the lady game cars were too big for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
that right. size, six foot seven Cardoso. Mm. You had a uh, walking. I just want you to, you know what these rappers always saying? It's all these big rappers y'all y'all look up to. They always tell you what the good part about, but you, they never tell you what the bad part. That's just, that, and that's crazy, man. Yeah, they got all this money, but get they, they they're dealing with emo spirits. They're dealing with kids themselves. Kids have like an hour left. So get extra comfortable, kids, because after that. Y'all gotta go, it's a wrap for y'all, cause this thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't wanna come to, okay? So, you know, let's just start to get our groove on a little bit, then an hour we put the kids away, it's all good. Hey, right, DJ, let's hit it, let's do it. Come on. Okay, now. Beyonce, Kid, and Black called Sia. What the, the when was the last time you seen heard about Sia? Never. Bare time ago. But Bare she was number ago. one on radio for a minute. So in 2016, she puts out a random tweet. Yeah. Like, no correlation. It's one of those ones where it's like, eggs, bacon, uh, grease. Oh, that, it's a code. It's yeah, it's code. It's code. It's code. Oh, I'll show you the code, bro. Yeah. It says, baby, everything your own nice cat eats, period. Kangaroo is dead. Nowhere and purple penguins every day. My egg. What the fuck? Right. Yeah. You take every single letter of the first word oh. and it spells Beyonce kidnapped me. No way. We don't got to clap cuz I'm at a point in my life like we all grew up in the streets and we try to be better, but they labeled us felons, sent us back to jail. I had to fight against that the whole time to gain my respect and be who I am today. And I'm proud of that. And I'm the list please please god told me to ask y'all for help i need your help i need your help i can't do it alone i'm overwhelmed i'm going crazy and god i beg you i beg you i beg you so i'm fighting this fight and to other people it's an impossible it's not impossible it's going to happen adding to the intrigue is ellen's famously playful attitude towards diddy especially when she's on her talk show She's even given him affectionate nicknames like Cuddle MC Snuggle Stuff and used this term in a heartfelt birthday message for him on social media. In normal circumstances, this playful nickname would be seen as just light-hearted banter between two industry colleagues. However, in view of this new footage, fans are re-examining that nickname, wondering if it was just friendly teasing or if it hinted at something more between them. With renewed interest, fans are looking closely at social media posts, past interactions and public appearances to see what they can find out about the relationship between Diddy and Ellen. The fact that both Diddy and Ellen have stayed silent about the recent rumours has only added fuel to the fire. It's often the things that aren't said in these situations that can be just as revealing as what is openly discussed. This new footage has got people wondering if Ellen and Diddy are more than just friends or business partners. With Diddy facing legal issues at the moment, people are talking more and more about his relationship with Ellen. This raises an interesting question. Does Ellen know anything about the darker side of Diddy's life? Or was she simply enjoying the luxurious celebrity lifestyle without much knowledge of his controversies? As fans wait to see if Diddy or Ellen will respond to the growing speculation, these rumours continue to spark conversations, leaving the public wondering if more will eventually come to light. Until Diddy or Ellen chooses to address the matter, this intrigue is likely to persist, fueling even more curiosity and online debates about the true nature of their relationship. What time do you stay up till? I stay up till like maybe six or six in the morning. I'm back up at like 10, 30, 11. Six in the morning? What do you do every night till six in the morning? You don't go to clubs every night. No, no I mean, I, I mean, I make love a lot. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, That's Ellen, my when favorite I, when, answer when, ever. When, <laughs> I told you when I came on the show, I was going to be completely honest and expose myself to the world. Elon Musk is not holding back. He says Eminem is another Diddy Party participant after it was announced that Eminem was going to introduce Barack Obama in Detroit. I don't know about you guys, but I think Elon Musk knows a lot and he's going to begin exposing 
many, many celebrities, and this is just the beginning. When it was announced that Eminem was going to be at the Kamala Harris rally in Detroit, this is what Elon Musk replied just like a few minutes ago. Yet another Diddy Party participant. What? What do you guys think Elon knows? Does he know something? Is he trying to tell us that almost everybody that's supporting Kamala attended a Diddy Party or something? Because that's insane if it is true. But now the fans didn't take this lightly because they started to remind him that he always hung out with Diddy too. Elon Musk, that is. And let's not forget, Puff, who is Diddy, was also an investor in Twitter to help Elon Musk take control over it. The internet is going wild right now with this, and Eminem fans are not having it, but who knows? Is Elon Musk telling the truth? What do you guys think? Eminem said Diddy deleted Tupac, and the rap world couldn't believe what happened next. Eminem dropped the machine gun, Kelly diss track, kill shot, and fans went insane. But one line about Diddy in particular got fans riled up more than anything about MGK. Eminem rapped the verse, but this idiot's boss pops pills and tells him he's got skills. But Kel's the day you put out a hit is the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got Tupac killed. Fans couldn't comprehend Eminem was calling out Diddy for ordering Tupac's un aliving. Tupac's deletion happened in Las Vegas 27 years ago and remains unsolved to this day. But even though Eminem's accusations were bold, he ended the track saying, I'm just playing Diddy, you know I love you. But Diddy responded and shocked fans with what he said. Diddy picked up the phone and called his friend Joe Budden to spill the tea. He said the war with Eminem was over because it was in his hands now and he'd put an end to it. But Joe was worried about Diddy. But Diddy insisted Eminem was just wild and there was nothing more to say about it. It. Did y'all really call Interscope to try to shell this? Fuck no. I I never made a fucking call. Made a call to Diddy? Really? Yeah. I got Diddy's number. Just hit him up. Yo, Diddy, what up? Never happened. When I heard that Tupac died, I was cooking in the restaurant and tickets were piling up and shit. I'm like, I don't care. Fire me. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that, man, that was devastating. Diddy hands me a drink, Kanye hands Lauren a drink, and we're like, that's weird, <laughs> why are they serving us? There was something not right. I was 19 years old. Diddy kept looking at me, and Kanye kept looking at Lauren, and like they were exchanging glances, and I'm like, they're like watching me, strangely. Immediately, I'm like, there's something in this drink. So I reach for my phone, and I start to type, and Kanye takes the phone out of my hands, and he's like, who are you texting? Like, you don't need to text anyone, like, we're having a party. And I was like, okay, and he, like, puts it on one of the speakers, and I'm like, F now what do I do? And I see my manager take a sip, and I'm like, F Two sips, and I watch her face flush. At 100%, I just knew that the drinks were all laced with something. I realized that I'm in the studio with Diddy and Kanye, they're coming towards me more and they're trying to like take my clothes off. They have like ripped my shirt off. Like I'm like almost fully exposed. P. Diddy, one of the most well-known names in the music industry, is currently at the center of some pretty serious allegations, which he's denying. His arrest has led to a lot of online speculation, with people looking through old lyrics, interviews and pop culture references to see if there were any signs pointing to his current situation. As his bail was refused, Diddy is still in jail, waiting to go on trial. But what can we really say about the tension between him and other celebrities? Some are even looking back at moments in pop culture that seem to have predicted this. Let's look at some of the most outlandish connections people have found so far. One of the most talked about moments involves Eminem, who released a song in July this year titled Fuel on his album The Death of Slim Shady. At first, not many people noticed, but recently fans have started analysing some of the more brutal lyrics that they believe are aimed directly at P. Diddy. The lyrics that have gone viral read, I'm like a rapist, got so many essays. Wait, did he just spell the word rapper and leave out a P? TikTok users were quick to spot the clever wordplay, noting how the phrase P. Diddy sounds suspiciously like P. Diddy's name. One user even suggested that Eminem has been hinting at this for years. It seems like this isn't the first time Eminem has thrown shade at Diddy either. Their feud goes way back to his 2018 song Kill Shot, where he referenced Diddy's rumoured connection to Tupac's death with the line, 
the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got Pac killed. Even TV shows have referenced Diddy's controversial reputation. Back in 2010, the popular TV show Supernatural made a subtle but funny reference to the music mogul in one of its episodes. In the scene, Sam, played by Jared Padalecki, jokes, what kind of thing likes virgins and gold? And answers his own question with P. Diddy. This clip has been doing the rounds online recently, with fans pointing out that it seems like a strange prediction, given that it was made more than a decade before Diddy's current legal troubles. A lot of people don't understand it's like a change in other guards. That's all it is. Like they stayed around, they played the game a little too long. And this is how God works. It's like hip hop is independent. You know, the music is independent. The owning of your masters is independent. It's a, it's a, it's a new change in other guard. And all the old parasites are just falling off one by one. Because they never had talent, they just leashed on to the talent. Let me tell you what Puffy was, and what a lot of them is. They mediators, what they call them mediators, right? Uh, where you got to go, they go betweens. So you got the, you got the Leos who who scared to, to approach the, the thugs like that. But Diddy from that world, so I could intermediate, I could get percentages from negotiating and making this deal, but you got to give up that butt. You got to give up that butt and royalty. And I can change your family life. Know why? Because he had to give up that butt. People don't understand. That's the reason, that's why it's the reason Puffy don't want to give nobody. Any artist he deal with, he'll tell you, I ain't gonna make it hard for you. Know, I had to do this. I had. He wants you to endure it. He endured. I told that he was, he likes women, he, so he would have, in fact, have to be bisexual. I've heard Sean Combs is in fact bisexual. From people who used to work in his company. So I'm assuming I'm not sexually Sean Combs. I've not spoke to Sean Combs. But based on those sources, I've heard he's in fact. 784 male shaped toys. Do you have any idea what that looks like? Well, I'm going to show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant. You know, he sets everybody up. Who's the person that's number one on that invitation list? Leonardo DiCaprio. And I can get on that list, yes, right? Yes, without a doubt. He has just confirmed that the family of Tupac Shakur is investigating a potential link between of Tupac and Sean Diddy Combs. This is coming from attorney Alex Spiro, who represents Tupac's family. Now, this investigation had been previously reported by unnamed sources, but earlier today, Spiro confirmed to our court TV team that he and a team of investigators has been hired. Sean Combs allegedly had business dealings with Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, who will go on trial next March for the of Tupac. This was back in 1996. Some have speculated that Diddy ordered Tupac's death. That, of course, is just a theory at this point, and we are monitoring the developments in both. This morning, watch how federal agents took Sean Diddy Combs into custody. He's seen in this video entering the Park Hyatt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan with others when agents from Homeland Security Investigations approach and separate him. They place Combs under arrest and lead him out the front door in handcuffs. His lawyer said Combs had come to New York two weeks earlier with the intention of turning himself in. He did not expect the agents to be waiting at his hotel last Monday night. Why doesn't the government want him to turn himself in? Because then they can't ask for detention. So they go and they arrest him. They arrest a guy who came to New York to turn himself in. One, two, three. A day earlier, Combs seen out and about in New York with his family seemingly... ...that tons of people knew about, from car bombs to assaults to crimes it's like p diddy was going for some kind of high score trying to catch every possible crime like a pokemon he has terrorized the music industry for decades and ruined so many lives in recent times the evidence against him to support all the allegations that have existed for decades has been overwhelming and led to a large investigation against p diddy and now it looks like we're reaching the climax climactic finale with him being arrested when this story broke last night the indictment was i would hang out and watch him throw parties i went to philly followed him all the way to philly and he said yo playboy this party cost a million and a half dollars i'm like you are out of your mind and i said puff i'll throw you a party for 400 bucks 
that will rival this party. Mm -hmm. And he got pissed at me. He said, no, no, don't play with, don't play with him. I said, no, I'm, I'm not, I, I respect you. But in LA, I'm known for throwing like these cool little parties. So he called like Saturday morning, yo, Playboy, I'm in town, make it happen. I said, cool. So I went into my little phones, sure. called about 200 of the coolest people. Puff showed up with, you know, SUVs and FBI. It was just, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> And you know, cause it was, you know, it was all, Puff was always sort of dangerous. You know? And he looked, he said, oh, that's the girl on that show, and that's the guy on that show. And I said, yeah, we're all friends. We all hang out. He said, oh, man. And I said, yeah, but Puff, look over there on the dinner table. I got Kentucky Fried Chicken. I put it in a nice plate. I said, I got Coca-Cola. I put it in a pitcher. We're at 208 bucks, and we are killing it right now. <laughs> the nigga Puff was like, yeah, like, first he was amping him to, to right. get... Stop. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like, we could just hang out, nigga, we gotta, we gotta oh, kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit, and he was like, yo, why don't we, like, go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it, and I was like, what the f this nigga just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the away from him, because I was like, this, this nigga, <laughs> Wait, this nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> This shit that goes on. Well, there's a little fruit pile. <laughs> it's a fruit pile. Trust me. You see these little weird ass bitches and shit like that out there? Just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, you don't see actual bitches would be like kissing each other. Like that doesn't happen by accident. Chair, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm chair. telling you. Look, look. Later you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Dude. Man, listen, I'm trying to tell you the truth, but Yo. the truth, sometimes it hurts. And, and I just want to say how much I appreciate Puff Dan for, for doing the kinds of work that he's doing because he doesn't have to do this. Uh, but this is part of what is important about giving back. Since we you know? applaud you, I and, and I want to apologize for not sweating, but I but I do this so much. I, I'm so cool. I just want y'all to see everybody I'm interviewing is sweating. I'm not even touching my brow. I'm so cool. And I want to apologize. I ain't trying to make you look bad or nothing like that, but I'm just so cool. Um, we, 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 we. <laughs> T-shirt. <laughs> I tell you, if he was wearing one of those fancy designer clothes he's designing, he'd be sweating just like... Someone you would want to be stuck in an elevator with. Kevin Hart. Okay. Women who talk baby talk in bed. Really? Oh, this is not how you play the game? <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's a turn on, somebody talking baby talk to you. No, 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 it's just talking. No, talking dirty. No, no, baby talk. Talking, baby talk is in the category yeah, yeah. talking dirty. Is it, is it a baby hey, or yo, like baby let me, explain, talk. let me explain something to you. There's no rules in talking dirty. There's no rules in talking dirty. I don't want to be with a baby. That's not my thing. I want her to talk. And okay. he's using music and entertainment to traffic. It's a dangerous thing. God protect us from our mind, talking us out of our powers of manifesting anything that we want if we believe in you, even if it's not there, even if it looks like it's not going to come. God, please bless you everyone's mind and know that you will always show up and you will show up on time. Um, God, please bless everyone that has had a rough year, um, but bless us for the good days, the bad days, the days that we have experienced death, the days we've experienced life, loss, happiness, victory. However you give it to us, we want to give you thanks for 2020. 2020 has been an incredible year. 2020 has been a great year. Please bless us that in 2021, we're not the same that we was in 2020, that we have excelled, that we have gone to a higher frequency, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of kindness, a, a higher level of self-love to eat the right things and to take care of ourselves, a higher level of self-love, especially, I mean, for anybody, but for my people, um, black people, please bless them to love themselves enough to, 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 to start fighting back in any way. Because nobody should be oppressed like this. Nobody should be treated like this. And God, I know that you know. And God, give, give us the courage in 2021 if anybody's being oppressed, to be able to destroy their oppressor. Um, and God, 
2020 was something. 2021, we pray. We pray. We pray it's better than 2020. And Biggie, and I think both of these dudes were assassinated in some kind of way. More Biggie than Tupac. I think Tupac might have uh, got killed by a dude that they, you know, had an incident with earlier that day. But Biggie's just seems a little JFK. governmental. <laughs> that are surfacing of Justin Bieber at a Diddy party and they are horrific. I'm talking truly and utterly horrific. Justin is at Diddy's parties and in this one video, it looks like whatever Justin is doing, I'm not going to show it out of just respect for the fact that I truly believe that Justin Bieber is a victim. But whatever he is doing in this video with Trey Songs and Odell Beckham Jr. looks highly suspicious. I can show you a still from that video uh, because I think the relevant part is uh, Justin Bieber is not sober. He is, is clearly very heavily under the influence at this party. And, they, and so what I want to say to Justin Bieber and to everybody that's following the situation uh, is that Justin Bieber is a victim. I was horrified when I saw this, not because of the idea that Justin Bieber would be engaged in these sorts of things at these parties, but because I understood that this was a kid who was intentionally targeted by Diddy as a video show told that he wants to party with him. He, and Justin Bieber didn't do that to himself. Like I said, Justin Bieber was, in my view, a child victim. And as these videos are circling on the internet, I want to make sure people remember that and give him the grace as someone who has somehow survived this, turned to family, turned to faith, and is still very much struggling with all of this. For people to give him the grace and the courage and the prayers to hopefully one day find within him, himself the strength to speak out about what happened. Anyways, it seems to be that it is all falling down in Hollywood. We will uh, continue to monitor that story, but I do encourage everybody to pray. Stepping into the 2021, hey, talk man. to me. Hey, yo, check this out. We've been in 2020. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Love, 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 love
One of the most striking moments in Diddy's history was a 1999 interview where he appeared to predict his own arrest. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Diddy was talking about the parties he used to throw, saying, They're going to be shutting them down. They're going to probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. This statement, made more than two decades ago, now feels oddly prophetic, given the charges he's currently facing. With all these connections, rumours and wild references swirling around, it's no wonder people are glued to this story. What do you think about the ongoing situation? Do you believe these moments really hinted at what was to come, or is it all just a coincidence? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you stay updated as this story unfolds. We'll keep you posted with any new developments.